You're watching the TC MMA Podcast. So we jump into the co-main event. The first title is on the line, women's bantamweight division. A fighter in Rockwell Pennington that was once, you know, 10 and 9. And has won six in a row to get to 16 and 9. Captured the belt. Taken on former champ who beat Amanda Nunez, then lost to her in Juliana Pena. Or actually, maybe not lost to her. No, I can't quite remember if it, if uh, Nunez beat Pena. We're going to see in the prediction. I can't remember at this exact time without looking. But I know she beat Nunez for the title. I think Nunez beat her, but I could be wrong on that. But nonetheless, this is a big opportunity for Juliana Pena. She wants to get the belt back. And, you know, these two are already going back and forth. Like, what I'm seeing online is Juliana Pena, it says, trashes Rockwell Pennington's behavior as champ before UFC 307 telling uh, the media actually today, Rockwell has not been a good representation of the women's bantamweight division. She has not uh, promoted. She has said no to embedded. She has constantly done everything that she can to avoid being the face of women's MMA. And then of course she goes on along that road. And, you know, maybe she has a point here, but maybe Pennington just doesn't want to do all that stuff. She just wants to focus on the fight. And those are the ones that scare you. The ones that don't want to talk, that don't want to engage in the trash talk. Like I always tell you when I played football and I lined up a receiver and the guy across from me, he wanted to talk a little trash. I talk a little trash. It loosened me up. Felt good. But when you get across from a guy who's not even trying to talk to you and he's just staring at you in the eyes, you're like, oh boy, this could be a long night. You don't know what he's capable of. When guys talk trash, you know, you know what they're thinking. You can talk, it just hypes you up even more. So when you got someone like Rockwell Pennington who's not willing to engage as much in the media and all that stuff and she just goes silent, goes dark before the fight, that's a little scary to me. So, you know, it's got her six straight wins, so something must be going right for her. But this is a big time title fight, so let's get into it right now. In the women's bantamweight division for the women's bantamweight division title at UFC 307. You got Rockwell Pennington, current champ, who's just 16-9, and nine, taking on Juliana Pena, who comes into this fight uh, with a loss in the last fight, right? We'll get into that in a moment, but she's 12-5, and five, USA versus USA. So Pennington, one-inch taller, 5'7". She's 36, Pena, 35, so they're getting up there, and you're seeing that uh, in the women's divisions. The older you are, the more experience you got, uh, you'll slow down at some point, but right now you're more likely to win. So that's why you see two older fighters here. Pena, one, one inch reach advantage. Both fighters stand right handed. Pennington lands over four significant strikes per minute to three uh, per minute for Juliana Pena. So, what's Juliana Pena's angle? She lands two takedowns every three rounds and can control you there and finish you there. Pennington just won every three rounds. Now, when you get into deeper into Rockwell Pennington, you see that she's got not great takedown defense, but 63%, right? That's right about average. Coming off six straight victories. I did not know this till I peeked at it. Beating Myra Bueno Silva for the belt and winning the previous five against fighters like Kellen Vera, Aspen Ladd, Macy Chiesan, Kenny Kianzad, and Marion Renault. So she's looked great uh, in the last six fights for sure. And you consider her record. She was 10-9 and nine at one point before going on the run. Now, on the other side, Pena lost the belt. First of all, 23% takedown defense. Not very good. Lost the belt to Nunez before beating her the first time. Got dominated in the second fight. 85-60 to 60 in significant strikes. Six takedowns to zero. For that, she did beat Nunez, beat Sarah uh, McMahon, and lost to Jermaine de Randami, who's still uh, in the mix and fighting at UFC Paris the week prior. So that's the way it breaks down. But listen, I think Pena's getting better and better. She did beat Dunez, looked good in that fight, is capable of finishing her opponents. Pennington, and the tough part with Pennington is you look at the record 16-9 and nine and you're like, what? But if you look at more what have you done for me lately, six straight wins is incredible. It's a very tricky prediction, but I'm going to lean towards Juliana Pena to get the win because I think she recognizes how good her ground game is. 
need to get the fight to the ground at all costs and even improve on two takedowns every three rounds and get it closer to one takedown each and every round and, and win fights that way. It's very important. But I think she recognizes that and will do that against Rocky, against Pennington in this fight to get the victory, win the bell back, the underdog story in this one. Uh, in my opinion, it moved to 13 and 5, women's band and weight division for the title at UFC 307. And maybe we're overlooking uh, Rockwell, Rocky, Pennington, right? Because it's hard to believe that she's just going to keep winning. I mean, she was 10 and 9 at one point. And we saw this from Charles Oliveira before he ran off like 10, 11 straight, had the belt for a while, all that stuff. Started out like 11 and 8, and then boom, right? Rocky Pennington's in the same boat. 10 and 9. Now she's 16 and 9 with the belt. It's like, how does that happen? It happens because you hit your peak. You hit the right age. You got the experience. And now all the previous fights don't matter because you're not the same fighter that you were when you were 10 and 9 in the lead up to that. And you and you sneak the belt. And Nunez walks away, paying you out, and you get the belt. So now she's got to prove that she's a champ because when Nunez walks away, you just figure, okay. Juliana Pena beat her, so she's eventually going to get the belt. But she couldn't fight at that time. So Pennington had like a sort of easy road to the title, right? Didn't have to face a former champ, nothing like that. Just got the vacant belt. Well, here you go. And if she wins this, if, if Pennington can find a way to win this and Kayla Harrison wins, wow. Wow. That's going to be a fight with two fighters who got a lot of power. So... That could be interesting. And even if Juliana Pena wins, that will be interesting too. But it seems like, you know, if you're someone like Kayla Harrison, among these four, now is the time to enter the UFC like she did. The The Bantamweight division seems wide open to me. It's hard for me to believe that Pennington's going to be a dominant champion. You never know. But it seems ripe for the taking. Uh, and uh, Kayla Harrison could emerge among these four. But the two winners are going to face off. That's what it seems like. He's gon' fight, wait, he's gon' fight, wait, hold your breath till the end of the night. Last fight a call, UFC at its height. Yeah, bringing that thunder with all his might. Say step up, step up, step up. wanna fight? Huh? Hold up, think twice. Ah. Gladiator assassin, reckless, no abandon. Walk through that cage, he'll leave your ass.